از نرسیم که سوامی مارش اما اما گیانت مرند سیا گنن جنا شلاکایا چکسورن میلی تنینا تسمای شری گروه نمها نما اوم بشنو پدایا کرشنا پرشتایا بوتالی شریماتی بکتی ویدانتا سوامنی تی نامنی Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavari Paschachadesha Tarine Vanchakaupata Rupyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Nama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So Mother Shida is also known by the name Janaki. She is the daughter of Maharaj Janak, who is one of the great 12 Mahajans, authorities of devotional service. Maharaj Janak, uh, generally we think of Maharaj Janak up in Janakpur, which is in Nepal, which is only some 50 kilometers away from here. Actually, present today, there are 20 devotees who came from Janakpur just to be here with us. So we're very fortunate that Janakpur devotees came all the way. They came by motorbike and so on just to be here with us today here in this place. So this Sita, uh, Sita Mir, this is part of the kingdom of Maharaj Janak. Maharaj Janak as a king, he had a kingdom, he had a great empire, a big kingdom, big land, and this was part of his land. So it happened that he came here to perform yagya. He would do sacrifice and part of the yagya was to plow. Even today, if you go to Thailand, I, I, I'm based in Thailand, so I've seen there how the king, even today, the king of Thailand will go every year and they do a yagya and they have a plow and they have the royal bullocks come and they will pull the special plow through the field. And from that, how the, the, the soil is turned over, they can predict, will it be a good year, will there be a good harvest, Will everything go nice in the kingdom? So similarly, many thousands of years ago, in the time of Janak Maharaj, he came here to this place and he performed yagya. And while he was plowing the field, out of the soil came Mother Sita. Sita, one who is born from the earth. So because she was found by Janak Maharaj, she got the name Janaki, the daughter of Maharaj Janak. Maharaj Janak was a very powerful king. He was very rich. He would give a lot of charity to the brahmanas. He was very, very charitable and very pious. He's one of the Mahajans, as I said. So he was an authority in devotional service. So Janaki was born into that kind of family. And of course, in the home of Maharaj Janak, they had the bow of Lord Shiva. That great bow, which took 200 men to carry. So that bow was kept at the up in the 
palace of Maharaj Janak. If, if, if you go to Janakpur, there's a beautiful building there, they, which they say, you know, like it's in the place where Maharaj Janak used to be. Very beautiful building. I've seen pictures, I've not been there myself, but I've seen the photos, it looks very, very nice. It's a popular place of tourism, and today we have our ISKCON center there. And that's how the devotees came. There's a quite a good center there. There's like 25 full-time brahmacharis, and there's many, many grihastha devotees there. They have a big congregation. So that is in Nepal, but it's very easy for them to come across the border. They often come here. So they came here for our association. Actually, we're, we're, we came here to get their association, <laughs> and they came to also give their association. So like that, uh, this place, Mother Sita, was discovered here. So this is where, at, they say, at that kund, where that lake is, which we circumambulated, it was in the middle there. The land was there where Maharaj Janak was plowing. There was no lake there before, but it was soil, and Maharaj Janak was plowing, and the child came out from the ground. So Mother Sita was born from the soil. She grew up in the palace of Maharaj Janak, and then, of course, it happened that Vishwamitra was taking Ram and Lakshman to kill different Rakshasas, and after they killed some Rakshas, the first one was a woman actually, a Rakshasi. So for, after they dealt with these Rakshasas and Rakshasis, uh, Vishwamitra told them, now you come with me. And they, he brought them up to Maharaj Janak's place, where they were performing the sacrifice to get a, a wife for Mother Sita. So. The, the challenge was that you wanted to get the, the hand of Mother Sita in marriage, you have to be equal. The husband and wife should be equally matched. When they're equally matched, then the marriage is very good. You know, if, if the husband is not very Brahminical and the wife is very Brahminical, then it will be difficult or vice versa. They should be of similar nature then the marriage will be successful. So Maharaj Janak had seen that his daughter was no ordinary lady. We should understand who is Mother Sita. She is not Durga. Durga is of the material world and Mother Durga is connected with Lord Shiva. However, Mother Sita she is the internal potency of the Supreme Lord. Lord Ramachandra is Vasudev, and Lakshman is Sankarshan, and Aniruddha and Prajumna are Bharat and Shatrukna. So they, they, they're all Vishnu Tattva. The four brothers, the four sons of Maharaj Dasarat are all Vishnu Tattva. They're not ordinary people, they're the Lord Himself coming to engage in particular pastime. And similarly, Mother Sita is also not an ordinary woman, but she is the internal potency of the Lord. And she comes. Her purpose in coming, of course, is to help are to take part in this pastime so that Ravan can be killed because Ravan had become a great burden on the earth. He had performed many atrocities. Just this morning, one Brahmana was telling us, he said that this Ravan, he told all the Brahmanas they had to pay him tax. And the Brahmana said, but we are men of the forest, we have no money. This used to be forest here, you know, not so much civilized. So when Ravan had no, no money, then he killed them. And the whole land was covered with the blood 
of Brahmins. So that was just one of his sins. Of course, he was very lusty and he had contaminated many young women and even Veda Vati herself had been touched by the hand of Ravan. So she, he had to be killed. But Ravan had the benediction, he had a blessing. He could, he could, he could not be killed by any god or any deva. So how to kill him? That is why the Lord came in the human form. He came in the form as the son of Maharaj Dasara. And Mother Sita, she is the Lord's internal potency. When the Lord comes, one of his qualities is he does not come alone, but he comes with his associates. Just like Lord Krishna, Lord Balaram came first, and before Lord Balaram, Nanda and Yashoda, they all have to take birth. And so many different gopis and cowherd boys, gopas, they all come to be present, to take part in the pastimes of Lord Krishna. So similarly with Lord Ramachandra, Lord Ramachandra did not come alone, but he came with his brothers and then also he took the hand of Mother Sita, who is actually his eternal consort. Mother Sita is therefore Lakshmi. She is a goddess of fortune from the spiritual world and she has come to take part in this Leela. And of course, after Lord Ramachandra takes the hand of Mother Sita, then it happened that when Maharaj Dasarath was about to coronate Lord Rama as a king, at that time Kaikeyi demanded two boons. And the boon was one boon that Lord Ram should go to the forest and stay there for 14 years. And the second boon was Bharat should become king, her son Bharat. So like this, this was the, the intrigue which arose. So Lord Rama was thinking he was going to the forest alone. But then Mother Sita also wanted to go with him. And she thought that, why not? I'm, I can also go and live in the forest. You're going to live in the forest. I can also go with you. What is the harm? What's the problem? I can live on fruits and berries. I can sleep on the ground. I'm not afraid. <laughs> of course, it was a it was a challenge for her because they had to wear the dress of the bark of tree. So when they came with that dress of bark of the tree, Mother Sita didn't know how to put it on. She was a princess. She'd been living in the royal palace. And now she was putting on the dress of the aesthetic lady, which was special cloth made from the bark of tree. So she couldn't, she, she didn't know how to put it on. Lord Rama had to show her, he had to help her how to wear this. Anyway, she accepted this austerity and she went to the forest, but then after some time, while they were in exile in the forest, it happened that Ravan heard about the beauty of Mother Sita. And Ravan is very, very lusty man. And when he heard about the beauty of Sita, he could not resist. And he thought how to get her. So with the help of Marich, he got Marich to help to kidnap, he got Marish to, to take out, to divert Lord Ram away from Mother Sita. Marish didn't want to do it, but Ravan was going to kill him if he didn't help him. So Marish thought, better I'm killed by Ram than to be killed by Ravan. If Lord Ram will kill me, then I will get moksha. But if Ravan will kill me, I will not get very good destination.
Well, one pastime which uh, Jayapitaka Maharaj didn't touch on was how during the exile, S Sita Ram and Lakshman went to Navadweep. And they went to the place Modadrumadweep. And they were in Modadrumadweep and they were enjoying the beauty of that place very green and lush and Lord Ramachandra was sitting and contemplating and he began to smile to himself. So Mother Sita could see the look on the face of her husband and she requested him, what is it that's giving you so much pleasure my dear husband? So that time Lord Ramachandra looked at his good wife and said, you know, I'm thinking how in the Kali Yuga we will come here. You will come as my wife, just as we heard Jaipataka Swami was telling. Lord Rama will come as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Mother Sita will come as his good wife, Lakshmi Priya, v Vishnu Priya, Vishnu Priya, second wife, yeah, the sec Vishnu Priya. So, uh, and he's, he said to his wife that, yes, we will be here and I will take sannyas and we will be separated. And Mother Sita thought, oh, and that's giving you so much pleasure, you're going to leave me, you're going to go off and take sannyas, what is this? And you're, you're happy about that? How you can do this? But then Lord Ramachandra explained to Mother Sita that yes, that by our separation we will increase our affection for each other and ultimately we will be reunited in the spiritual world. So that is the position that Ayodhya is there in the spiritual realm as well. You can read in the Brihad Bhagavatamrita Sanatana Goswami is describing about Gopkumar, a cowherd boy who is going through different places and he's looking for his ultimate destination where he's actually happiest most. And so he went through the different realms of the material world to the higher planets up to Satya Loka. He went into the Kailash where Lord Shiva resides and he went into Vaikuntha and from Vaikuntha then he heard also how there is also Ayodhya where Lord Ramachandra is worshipped, where he resides eternally with Mother Sita and with all the other devotees of Ayodhya. So in the spiritual world there is also Ayodhya and Lord Ramachandra resides eternally. So Lord Ramachandra told Mother Sita that our separation will increase our feeling for each other and that way we will then be eternally reunited in the spiritual world. So the comparison is then made also how Lord Ramachandra he was a king in Ayodhya and we heard Mother Sita was born from the earth and she remained in exile Lord Ram, but she was kidnapped by Ravan. So when she came back after Lord Rama, oh, it's Srimad Bhagavatam and Ramayana also tells how the separation between Sita and Ram was so intense 
that Lord Rama felt so much anger against this Ravan who had kidnapped his own pleasure potency, Mother Sita. He felt so angry at this person that when he heard that Ravan was residing across the ocean and Mother Sita was being held captive there, Lord Ramachandra came to the shore of the ocean and he looked into the ocean with so much anger that the whole ocean began to heat and all the aquatics, all the sharks and the snakes and crocodiles which reside there in the ocean, they were all afflicted, they were all affi afflicted with the heat of the water. It became unbearable for them. They were in this very hot water and at that time the God, the Varuna came before Lord Rama and fell at his feet and begged him that, my dear Lord, please show your glory. He said, Varuna said, I could make a passage way for you, but it will be better for your own glory. You construct a bridge across the ocean to, to the island of Lanka. So in this way, Lord Rama agreed that he would build a bridge across to Lanka. And with the help of all the Vamaras, the Hanuman and Sugriva and all the other monkeys and bears, they all helped him to construct a wonderful bridge across the ocean. But the point was that Lord Rama had so much love and so much affection for Mother Sita that the thought that someone could take away his wife from him made him so angry that his anger was so intense that he looked into the ocean, the whole ocean became so hot. So Srila Prabhupada explains to us in the purport in relation to this that this is transcendental. This anger of Lord Ramachandra, it is not material. It's not like our anger. You, we get angry. Maybe somebody takes your husband or somebody takes your wife, you know, you get so angry. Of course, sometimes you feel very happy also. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, Lord Rama was showing his transcendental potency that the whole ocean became so hot. And Prabhupada said, there's no difference between the anger and the, and the joy of Lord Ramachandra that it is all transcendental. It's not of the material world. It's not as we think of anger as we know it, which is coming, it's a transformation from lust. Like from lust comes anger. But Lord Ramachandra's anger is not like that. It's a transcendental display of his potency. So, Lord Ramachandra then crossed the ocean and in this way Ravan was killed and Mother Sita was reclaimed. But when Lord Ramachandra brought Sita back, Lord Ramachandra as a king, he was very worried, what do people think? Although he had tested Mother Sita's chastity after he brought her back, after he killed Ravan, he first of all built a fire and he ordered Mother Sita to walk into the fire and she walked into the fire and then Agni the fire god carried out the real Sita from the fire and the Maya Sita was burned in the fire. But the real Mother Sita came out from the fire. So Lord Ramachandra accepted Mother Sita and brought her back to Ayodhya. But he was very concerned, what do the people of Ayodhya think? And so it, he had his different spies go around the kingdom and he had different and every day they had to come back and report to Lord Ramachandra what they had heard. So it happened that one day one of the spies came back and he had heard one barber who was angry with his wife and he was telling his wife, 
His wife had gone off with another man. She had, she had not been a faithful wife. She had not been chaste. Mother Sita is known for her chastity. But this barber was angry at his wife that she had gone off with another man. And he said to, when she come back, you know, sometimes it happens like that. Women are foolish. They leave their husband to go off with another man. So she came back to her husband, but the husband said, Lord Ram may take his wife back. I'm not taking you back. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Okay. Okay. All right. So the the barber said to his wife, Lord Ram may. <laughs> Lord Rama may take his wife back, but I'm not taking you back. So the spy told Lord Rama what he had heard. And when Lord Rama heard this, then he thought, people are doubting my character. So he ordered Lakshman, he said, I want you to take Sita to Valmiki's ashram and leave her there. And at this time, Mother Sita, she, she had conceived. So she was carrying within her womb. Of course, they were twins. They were to become the two sons, Lam and Kush. But while she was pregnant, Lord Ramachandra ordered Lakshman take her to the ashram of Valmiki. Lord Rama was so concerned that there should not be any doubt about the character of the king. So this way he had Mother Sita sent to the ashram of Valmiki. So she stayed there for some time. She delivered the two sons, Love and Kush, and then she gave up her body. She returned into the earth. She appeared from the earth and she went back into the earth while she was in exile in Valmiki's ashram. So Lord Rama is the king and he has to do yagya. And y the king's supposed to, when you do a yagya, you do it with your wife. Wife has to sit by the side of the husband. Very important in the yagya. You know, Brahma was doing yagya. <laughs> he was waiting for his wife. She was not coming. She said, I'm coming, I'm coming. Just wait. I'm coming. Just now coming. <laughs> when the time came, of course, Brahma came. The time came for the yagya. They said, look, it's the time. You have to have a... So they said, okay, take another woman. So he took another wife. He took the second wife. So then when the first wife, when Sar Saraswati came, then she cursed him. That he would only be worshipped in one place. And that is Puska. So anyway, Lord Ram, he made the vow, Ekapatni Vrat, only one wife. Now, Kshatriya kings had so many wives. Maharaj Dasarath, you know how many wives he had? Three. Well, we had how many? Three? Three. But he had 360 other wives. <laughs> <laughs> he had three primary wives, main wives, just like Krishna had eight principal queens, but Krishna had 16,100 <coughs> other queens. So Maharaj Dasarath, he had three queens, but he had also 360 <laughs> other queens. It's described in Valmiki Ramayana like that. So Lord Rama, he made that vow, Eka Patni Vrat, no, only one wife. But how to do yagya? So he had deity of Mother Sita made. And he would do the yagya with the deity of Sita sitting beside him. And every yagya he do, the deity was there with the side, by the side of Lord Rama. So Trita Yuga, Lord Rama is with his wife in the form of the deity. In the Kali Yuga, Lord Rama becomes Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he takes sannyas and his young wife 
Vishnu Priya is there and he goes away and leaves his young wife. So she's worshipping the deity. Her husband is there in the form of Dameshwar Mahaprabhu, mm -hmm. that deity which is there in Navadri. They say that was a deity worshipped by Vishnu Priya in the absence of her husband. So you can see the situation was reversed. In the Treta Yuga, Lord Rama has his wife in the form of the deity. In the Kali Yuga, Mother Sita comes as Vishnu Priya yeah. and her husband's there in the form of the deity. So this is the pastime. Okay, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.